So what makes an epic GTX 1070? Improvements of the AI beat card cooler design, phase power design, out of the box OC mode base and boost frequencies, power connections, weight and size, custom VBIOS, aesthetics, or how about that RGB lighting? Or just the fastest GTX 1070 there is. I'm John from Optech, bringing you my top five GTX 1070s. The GTX 1070 is a home run hitting card given its amazing price to performance for an enthusiast grade card, its incredible performance per watt, and its impending availability and price normalcy with its base market suggested retail price of $379 for a non-founders edition. At the fundamentals of the 1070's graphics chip, its similarities are reminding us of its big brother, the GTX 1080. The biggest distinction is the silicone is a cut down version of the GP104, having a GP104-200 in the 1070, so it has the same architecture of that of the GTX 1080, although the 1070 has a reduction in core count with 1920 CUDA cores versus 2560, a 20% reduction in memory bandwidth. So if you're not already acquainted with the 1070's performance, a quick rundown so you know what kind of gaming and VR epicness you'll be getting yourself into. Here's the relative performance to the previous gen counterpart, and using the reference card as the base for comparison and performance, PC Gamer recently published their 15 game 77 frames per second average at max settings at 1440p in popular graphically intensive AAA titles including Ashes of the Singularity, The Division, Doom, and Grand Theft Auto V. And it's very important to note that that was at stock clocks. The reference GTX 1070 advertising a base of 1506 megahertz and a boost clock of 1683 MHz, and typically can overclock to over 1900 megahertz, yielding, depending on which game, around a 10% or greater improvement in frames per second. So that megahertz to frames per second ratio within that frequency range, keep that in mind as I go through my lineup of GTX 1070s for performance expectations. That said, I'll be sticking with the advertised out of the box OC mode target base and boost clock speeds on cards in this lineup. Given the variance in overclocking from same card from a different box, due to each GPU having a unique max clock curve based on the silicone, also thermals in your environment and the current VBIOS voltage lock. Given the AIB partner cards typically have an open air cool design, they typically have a 10% to 25% reduction in temperatures at load when compared to the reference. So it's appearing that the voltage limitation set by NVIDIA is well met before the card's thermal limits are met. The lock keeping it from exceeding 1.075 volts no matter how far you set the voltage curve. So not being an overclocking expert or a 16 nanometer FinFET expert, it does seem that the VBIOS voltage limit could be a little overly conservative given the incredible design these aftermarket cards sport. So once pricing stabilizes for the aftermarket lineup, with MSRPs a bit lower than that of the reference card, it's game on for superior performance, improved thermals, aesthetics, out of the box bass and boost frequencies, improved power phase design, added power connections, all at a lower price. So without further ado, let's crank up the voltage, turn on that RGB lighting and get right into my top five. So I'll leave a comparison guide throughout and at the end of the video. And also please be sure to check the links I provided in the description box down below for pricing, availability and further information. Up first, from one that reminds me of the noisy cricket from Men in Black. No, it's not that noisy, though it just packs the most punch per square inch. Yeah, from Gigabyte, the eye in the sky, we have the Gigabyte GTX 1070 Mini ITX with an MSRP of $399, dubbed the Nano Killer. That is oh so ready to give you the GTX 1070 performance for your extra small form factor PC at just seven inches in length with an OC mode core clock of 1556 MHz and a boost of 1746 MHz, that's not too shabby at all. It has one 90 mm fan with custom blades to enhance airflow. The heat sink has three heat pipes having direct contact to the core. Now the fan isn't the quietest on this blower style design, but given the size of this bad boy, no complaints whatsoever. And there's also a slight upgrade to the phase power with a five plus one design as opposed to the four plus one of the reference and it has an eight pin power input. So I'll be keeping my eye on this one for a badass future mini ITX build. Up next, we have the MSI GTX 1070 Gaming Z with an MSRP of $449, the fastest out of the box clock version available from MSI from Pascal. 
this is the final form. The Super Saiyan is upon us, having the new Twin Frozer 6 thermal design and a custom 10 phase power design. This card having OC mode, base and boost frequencies of 1657 MHz and 1860 MHz respectively. It's a bit of a larger card in height at 144mm, 270mm long, and 42mm in thickness. So it is rocking a larger than usual custom PCB for improved thermals. Also an extra 6 pin power input connection, those Japanese solid caps, and an RGB LED backplate with that sinister dragon logo. It is red, a bit overkill red, but for a red theme build, it's perfection. Up next, I've heard your request. We have the Galax Hall of Fame GTX 1070 Limited Edition. With an MSRP of $449, this may be the most beautiful of them all. One GPU to rule them all. I love the marketing and branding from Galax. These cards are just beautiful, aside from the incredible specifications. With dimensions of 330mm by 152 by 55 with a nice out of the box base clock of 1657 MHz, a boost of 1860 MHz, and it has that perfect aesthetic for an all white theme build with an elegant and classy anodized aluminum Hall of Fame backplate, and it has three, yes, three 90 millimeter fans, two eight pin power connections, a 12 plus three phase digital power supply that is ideal for extreme overclocking. That's the same digital power supply design on the Galaxy GTX 1080 that reached 2.5 gigahertz with liquid nitrogen at 1.38 volts back at Computex. I think the, uh, the digital, it, it makes us more easy to push the, uh, the voltage or the GPU clock uh, yeah. in terms of software application. Yeah. I'm sure there are some limitations in the bio, either the BIOS or, or the driver which we probably lock something. Although please don't expect anything near this without some LN2, custom B BIOS, and of course overclocking expertise. Up next, from GainWord, we have a phoenix rising from the ashes with an MSRP of $399, the Goals Like Hell Edition, with a base clock of 1670 MHz and a boost of 1873 MHz. For its dimensions, it's 285 millimeters in length, 133 millimeters in height, and it's pretty thick at 48 millimeters, making a 2.5 slot card, but it's still a good fit in your ATX case. It has two well-designed 100 millimeter fans. Also, it comes with two V BIOS with a dual BIOS switch to overclock with confidence. This card maintains that higher boost clock frequency. So if you can get your hands on one of these for a reasonable price, you can't go wrong with a goes like hell edition from Gainword. All right, and last but not least from EVGA, having one of the best reputations in the hardware industry for reliability and customer support. We have the GTX 1070 for the win, gaming ACX 3.0 with an MSRP of $469 right now. It has an out of the box base clock of 1607 and a boost of 1797, has two 8-pin power connections, and a 10 plus 2 power phase design. This is one beautiful card with a honeycomb aesthetic that has RGB lighting to match any color design you have going on. That said, the very high-end graphics cards from EVGA are still on the way with the classified expected to be released very soon, and it's going to be followed by the hybrid and the hybrid copper. The classified is going to have that elite 14 plus 3 phase power design, the fans on the For The Win use double ball bearings offering an extra long lifespan and has a reasonable length at 266.7 millimeters. And of course, a stunning backplate accompanies this card. And if you're on the hunt for an entry level overclocked out of the box from EVGA, take a look at the SC. If you could pick one of the SCs up, you could notice some price savings. All right, everyone, that concludes this top five GTX 1070 graphics card video. I hope you enjoyed this rundown on my five choices. Please feel free to add your own favorite GTX 1070 or one from this list down below. And if you own one of these, please be sure to share your experience down below for others to see and learn. And I know that pricing and availability for Pascal vary greatly in these times. Although you can still check the links in the description box down below, but feel free to vent any rage at the pricing volatility down in the comments below, or make us jealous if you own one of the 1070s in your rig right now. So as always, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, thumbs down if you hated it, and please stay tuned and subscribe to my channel so you can help me grow and I can continue to give you guys better content. I really appreciate all of you. I can't wait to catch you all in the next video.